I'm delighted to speak about a topic that's both an objective and a challenge uh, for all of us individually, uh, but also for society as a whole. And I will speak about, let's see whether it works. Yeah, uh, aging as an ongoing development, uh, healthy aging, and the importance of a uh, broad societal innovation agenda for health that is much broader than just prevention and care, but also includes other domains, including the environment in its broadest sense. And as you all know, like in most Western countries, life expectancy in the Netherlands has substantially increased in the past 150 years, both for women and men. Uh, and this picture, this classic picture, uh, reminds us how impressive this increase has been. And this was the result of economic development, better nutrition, better public hygiene, social innovation, such as better health insurance, and also social security, including banning child labor, and better education. And on top of that, improvements in preventive services and healthcare. And this was closely connected with scientific and technological progress that in fact could be better harvested in a modernizing societal context. This development was associated with major changes in uh, disease patterns, partly because of the enormous reduction of the mortality from infectious diseases such as tuberculosis and uh, puerperal fever, partly because of lifestyle changes, and this resulted in simultaneous increase uh, of, for example, cardiovascular diseases, cancer, and accidents. But as shown before, the overall effect was an impressive increase in life expectancy. But this increase of life expectancy is not just history. Uh, on the contrary, it's still observed today. And in the past decade, the gain in life expectancy was a striking two to three years in the Netherlands, and that's almost a weekend per week. And there's no indication that this increase will stop shortly, although the speed of the increase might slow down a bit. And the reasons for this ongoing process are not fully understood yet, but sustained reduction of perinatal mortality and of smoking, uh, and also increasing quality of care are among these reasons. Of course, ongoing progress in life expectancy is very welcome, as it is most people's personal objective to get old. But we want preferably, preferably um, have this happening with maintaining health as much as possible, that is without really being old. Uh, and we strive, uh, as the uh, very well-known saying says, not just for aging, but for healthy aging, with adding not only years to our life, but also life to our years. And at this point, we face a paradoxical problem. In addition to the overall increase in life expectancy, we see for both sexes a similar increase in healthy life expectancy. That is the number of years that people perceive to be in good health. This also means that aging of society is connected with younging of individuals, as I would call it, um, which means that the average person of a certain age, let's say 65, um, is biologically quite younger than a person of the same age 50 years ago. But at the same time, the number of years that people perceive to be not in good health did not increase. It's quite stable uh, at 15, 15 to 80 years of life on average, this difference between these two 
types of life expectancies. So it's quite, sorry, it's quite uh, reasonable to try to reduce this gap. Uh, but we then must realize that aging starts when life begins. Biological processes, cumulative problems in mechanisms, uh, cumulative damage from the physical environment, uh, mini traumata of mental, uh, to mental condition, decreasing function of repair mechanisms, uh, they're all active throughout life and effective all, effect is all, of course, with susceptibility differences between individuals. And to put it differently, as we know very well today, many health problems at higher age have been prepared in earlier life. And unfavorable health uh, at the young age may lead to less effective school education, lower paid jobs, and higher unemployment. Uh, and this clearly emphasizes the importance of effective prevention and health promotion from the youngest possible age, in fact, uh, even starting before the conception. Most of us encourage ourselves with the slogan, it's never too late for healthy aging. Uh, and that's true. Uh, think about prevention at higher age, such as smoking cessation, a more physical exercise, but also optimizing health care. Uh, and uh, 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 also, um, uh, we should consider that promoting health in this way is not only important for uh, those uh, conceiving themselves as healthy, but also very important uh, for those with a health problem. Um, all these preventive actions uh, are very important for people already having uh, a disease or even a chronic disease, which is a large group. Uh, it's by now about f 5 million people in the Netherlands uh, expecting to increase to 7 million in 2030. Uh, so also better dealing with uh, chronic illness in daily life is implied in this development, and I'm sure that Machtel Huber is going to address that shortly. So in view of what was said before, in fact, uh, the idea of uh, it's never too late for healthy aging should be it's never too early uh, for healthy uh, aging. Um, and by the same token, for really serious problems, we cannot just say prevention is better than cure, since the alternative often may be no cure. Uh, so then it's rather coping with a problem than uh, curing it. But there is some reason for optimism if one wants to extend the healthy life expectancy, and that's what we uh, all want. Uh, and that optimism can be derived from international comparison with uh, neighbor countries. Uh, and here you see a number of European countries compared as to healthy life expectancy in 2011. Um, I expect more recent data coming up shortly, but this is from 2011. And there's quite some variance, as you see, with the Netherlands in a middle position with men comparing internationally slightly better than women. Uh, in comparison with the best performing countries, uh, as you see, uh, there might be a room for improvement uh, to an amount of five or even 10 extra healthy years. Of course, after having checked for potential measurement issues in this comparison but there is a clear indication that there's room for improvement. And in the next slides, also based on international comparison, I give three uh, examples for room uh, for public health improvement. First, looking at daily smokers. We see that the Netherlands are in a unfavorable international position. Uh, just at the right side of the middle, much higher uh, as to rates of daily smoking than Sweden and Iceland uh, at 
the left. But these days we have got some good news that especially at a very young age, uh, the teenagers, there is in the past five years quite a substantial reduction of smoking, and that's good news. But there are still a lot of uh, people, about 25 percent, uh, uh, including non-daily smoking in the Netherlands, and that's a lot. Regarding self-reported overweight, our country is uh, at the better side, the left side of the middle, but still we score, we score much worse than a number of other European countries, especially Switzerland and France. And then our average number of liters alcohol consumption per head, per year. Here, the Netherlands is again uh, somewhere near the left of the middle, uh, so in the better half, but still scores a lot more than Sweden, Norway, and the striking lo strikingly low scoring Turkey. What's going on there? <laughs> Such comparisons uh, are indeed useful as they can learn us about the impact of policies like taxes, Nutrition, Texas, think uh, about the Scandinavian countries. Uh, nutrition uh, and lifestyle patterns and also cultures and religions. Uh, and this can help to consider acceptable but possibly also unacceptable options for more effective approaches. Another very important comparison between subgroups with different uh, is the comparison uh, between subgroups with different socioeconomic and educational backgrounds. It was mentioned by the mayor this uh, afternoon already. And in this figure, you can see a striking six years difference in the expectancy, the life expectancy between the Dutch people from the highest versus the lowest level of education. Um, and even more striking is the difference found between the same groups when we look at the healthy life expectancy. Uh, we see here a difference between the highest and the lowest level uh, of about 20 years. Um, and these differences are quite stable over the past decades, despite the work of various task groups to reduce them. These differences are not very much related in the Netherlands to healthcare quality and healthcare accessibility, as we have a quite good coverage uh, in health insurance uh, and health delivery for all. Um, they can partly be explained by lifestyle rate related factors, but much is still unclear, uh, as it's also internationally uh, a scientific debate on uh, similar patterns elsewhere. Um, our council, together with the National Institute for Public Health and the Environment, the RIVM, is now making an additional effort to increase our understanding and to prepare policy recommendations. And such recommendations should not only include ways to reduce these differences, but also when reduction is not possible, uh, or not possible within a reasonable time, uh, uh, you should think on how to account uh, for them. For example, by applying a more fair retirement age in relation to healthy life expectancy. This is a huge problem, of course, uh, that has to be covered. The importance of addressing and, where possible, reducing these differences is of crucial importance, of course, for individual health, but also for society as a whole as more healthy years for all means more uh, population life years in good health, a stronger and more sustainable workforce, and longer social participation, something we really need. And in this connection, um, a related issue is the demographic trend uh, related to aging in most Western societies, referred to as D. Euvenation. While people get on the average older, the uh, proportion of younger people is decreasing dramatically. While their 
contributions are fundamental for the economy, social security, and care for all. For the Netherlands, this trend is illustrated in this figure with the pyramid, in fact, changing over the decades into uh, something like a Jules Verne rocket. Uh, and obviously, this emphasizes the need for policies not only aiming at a society that is friendly uh, to the elderly, but also to new generations and parents of young children. And this is not only important for prevention uh, and care for young people, uh, which is very uh, sufficiently important in itself, but also for the intergenerational chain to the future. This is about the future of all generations, all uh, of whom will get inevitably older. And this demographical perspective should also be considered when discussing international migration, as been analyzed by our council uh, recently. Uh, increasingly, the Dutch population growth is mainly a result of immigration. In 2015, for example, we had the birth balance of only 23,000 um, as a result of high mortality and few births. Uh, but we had a total increase of 79,000, uh, which was 134,000 in 1975. So, so quite a, a decrease of the increase. But the number of uh, this increase was achieved by a migration balance of 56,000, with the largest contribution by Syrian immigrants. And of course, the crucial issue is then to integrate uh, immigrants more effectively uh, in our labor market. And this is a current very big challenge for our government and many cities. Another development that has been, uh, uh, has been observed is that many people with chronic illnesses nowadays participate more often in the labor market. And this is a result of more activating approaches in healthcare and rehabilitation practice in collaboration with insurance physicians and supporting, uh, supported by social security policies. The basic uh, thing is, of course, that in general, labor participation is good for physical and social health and for society. And as you see here, in some groups, um, especially uh, the uh, group uh, that has long-term illness but reports no activity limitation and rates uh, the uh, own health as good. Uh, in that subgroup, the percentage of uh, participation uh, almost matches that in the group without chronic illness. So there, there's a lot of development going on there. Um, and that's very important, both for society and for the participation of these uh, groups. It therefore seems not so much the disease diagnosis that governs work participation, but the activity limitation and the perceived state of health. Um, and it's also a very important insight for um, uh, coaching uh, patients with chronic illnesses to the labor market. And we can add to this that in the current years, an increasing new labor force is occurring uh, at the, uh, as the general uh, retirement age is being raised until 68. And uh, we see that this group is often more highly educated, more often has a chronic illness, but has relatively less often activity limitations. And this reflects, uh, again, the before mentioned health inequalities. Clearly, uh, um, aging and health is a topic that relates to many, uh, and, uh, to many various uh, domains. And to address these, we really need a broad societal 
innovation agenda. It's clear from the developments I have described um, in the previous part. And uh, we should also then focus on appropriate interventions and interventions focused on healthy aging have the overarching aim to promote quality of life, uh, well-being, autonomy and societal participation. Uh, and include a range of uh, interventions, uh, for example, uh, health promotion in every phase of life, with much input from the behavioral sciences, that it is mostly about behavioral change, um, disease prevention and reduction by primary prevention, secondary, secondary prevention, prevention integrated with healthcare, very important development, uh, and also connecting population-oriented and individualized, uh, more tailored approaches. And of course, we also uh, have the development of anti-aging interventions like cosmetic surgery, lens extractions, uh, and largely still quite experimental uh, interventions such as tissue repair and gene uh, therapy. And in addition, uh, interventions in various other societal domains are very important to, to develop. And the basic message is then, when we as a society want to make steps forward regarding healthy agents, uh, we really need a comprehensive approach at the micro level of individuals and families, the meso level of professions and organizations, and the macro level of governments and national and international uh, networks. Moreover, work must be done in various domains. So of course, these are the levels, these are the domains and uh, other speakers this afternoon have similarly addressed this uh, type of approach. Um, and often these domains have to addressed, have to be addressed in an overarching uh, way of cooperation. For example, if we look at nutrition, a macro level, uh, at macro level we need policies addressing healthy and sustainable food production and fair retail. At meso level, we then could, could make better use of nudges to make the healthy choice the easiest, rather than the, re uh, than the reverse. Uh, and at the micro level, uh, we speak about healthy food consumption in families. And obviously also in environmental interventions, uh, we should address various levels, including the promotion of intergenerational interaction in spatial planning and housing. And using such a framework can help to develop and monitor well-targeted <coughs> initiatives. In fact, the Healthy Aging Program of Groningen, Groningen University um, is very well reflecting this type of framework. And the same applies, I can say, to the Dutch uh, University Medical Center's uh, inputs in the National Dutch Research Agenda. In the context of the team of this Congress, a uh, wealth of great initiatives uh, is being presented. Uh, I mentioned a few interesting initiatives uh, I observed in the international uh, community. For example, the New York, New York City initiative in collaboration with the Department of Aging, uh, which provides uh, a so-called uh, so-called design uh, guidelines for promoting physical activity and health in design and city planning, uh, including much more intention for nudging, such as changing the decision defaults to stimulate taking stairs instead of elevators, etc. And another, so this is a very uh, strong collaboration between many, many uh, societal stakeholders in New York City. And another interesting initiative is the Healthy Urban Planning uh, by the WHO Center in uh, Kobe 
the Japanese city, including walking to school programs for obesity prevention. Uh, a comment then might be that such programs work of course best in a quiet green environment rather than busy streets with a lot of exhaust. So uh, maybe this approach should be more uh, comprehensive to be really effective. But it's a very good uh, 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 start. A third initiative I would like to mention is the City Health Check, developed by the Royal Institute of British Architects, which is in the best public health tradition supporting cities in making themselves a healthier place for their citizens. And the tools can be uh, uh, consulted at the website. So um, a lot of interventions, comprehensive um, in the interplay between the individual, the meso level, and the macro environment uh, are uh, running. Uh, and of course, then we should take care that these initiatives are evaluated well. Um, they should be done in individual intervention studies, but also in systematic reviews of studies, checking methodological quality and summarizing the evidence for users all over the world. For medical interventions, as many of you may know, the appropriate worldwide network for review is the Cochrane collaboration. Uh, and for example, uh, uh, you can see here in an interesting thing. I took a sample of 250 of those reviews uh, and I learned that uh, this very important data database suffers from what I would say, although it's very good and important, from funding bias. Uh, for example, uh, most reviews are on starting a new drug, while drug cessation is only very seldomly studied, although this is an enormously important topic uh, for all the patients suffering from polypharmacy. So um, there's a very important research agenda for non-industry sponsored research here. For social and um, policy interventions, we have the Campbell Library with reviews, for example, on employment policies, food supplementation, and home visit programs. It would be great to welcome in especially this library studies evaluating architectural and environmental interventions. I would like to end with a plea for further investing in healthy aging, given all the challenges we have seen. Um, and as in many countries, the past uh, decades, in the past decades, aging was seen also in the Netherlands as an important risk factor for strongly increasing healthcare cost. Um, but in the past few years, it turned out that our government uh, was quite successful in uh, cost containment. Um, so it turned out that aging was very well uh, countered in the policy making. Um, since 2012, we saw only little annual increase, which was less than the increase of the GDP. Uh, so we see now even a reduction of healthcare expenditures as a percentage of the GDP. Um, but in addition to that, let's not forget that prevention and care are not just cost, but an in essential investment yielding health gain, uh, but also economic benefit. And according to excellent work of Surke and McKee, um, prevention and care should be seen uh, as uh, one of the most important sectors in developed economies. It promotes participation in labor markets, uh, social activities, and informal care. And it stimulates science and technology and health-related industries, big industries, as we know. Moreover, it provides extensive direct employment. Around 10% of all workers in the EU25, um, so 
some years ago, but it's still uh, in the, the, the similar uh, um, proportions um, at present, the, 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 the case. 10% uh, of all workers are employed in the health and social work sector. And furthermore, uh, we speak about uh, a substantial part of the GDP um, not less than accounted for by, for example, financial and retail trade sectors. Accordingly, the performance of the health sector affects the competitiveness of the economy via effects on labor costs, the labor market, and macroeconomic uh, mechanisms. And this analysis is complemented by the plea in the EU grant challenges that investing in health means also addressing health inequalities, um, addressing social cohesion, and breaking the vicious spiral of poor health contrib contributing to and resulting from poverty and exclusion, so that the perspective of healthy aging becomes a more common public goal than something for the elite. So let me end uh, at this point. I hope to have made clear that striving for healthy aging demonstrates uh, very clearly the need for a broad societal uh, innovation agenda for health, an innovation agenda that is much broader than prevention and care, that also include other domains, including the environment in its broader sense, and this agenda must also consider that healthy aging is both a result and a motor of progress. Um, and we should also consider that we need inclusive policies to promote quality of human life and utilization of all capacities. And um, today uh, at the University of Groningen, the UNCG, uh, also a very, very strong uh, knowledge infrastructure. Um, there are many, many issues to be covered by good research and development. And I wish you much success with that mission. Thank you very much.